All right, all right, all right. We are here live at that place, Chris Lights Out Lido Podcast. With me, as always, is Brandon. What's happening, Brandon? Hey, how we doing, guys? All right, so that place on the south side here, right off Emerson, pretty close to Greenwood. So good place. Close if you've enough. never been here, come check it out. This place is huge. Um, it'd be good if there was like a band here, but I think we're taking that place. I apologize. But next time we'll be a band or something. We'll so sing for you guys. It'll be all right. I'm not singing. So. <laughs> there we got pool tables over here. We got uh, plenty of good beer drinks. I got me some uh, Three Floyds. I'm drinking Gumball, Gumball Head, head. one of my Atta favorites. Boy. So, boy. Yeah. I, I, I forgot last time you guys were guessing, and that's what it was. You never guessed it right. So um, come drink some Gumball Head with me. And if you come right now, I, I will buy the first two people uh, Gumball Head. Hey, you can't argue with that. Come, come on, come on down here to the south side. Um, I mean, we've got, we've, got, we've got some good stuff for you here today. I mean, we're gonna. I've, I've been talking about this all week. We missed you last week. There's been a lot that's happened in the last two weeks. Oh my god, you're right. We're gonna talk about some guns. Oh, I got a lot of gun stuff. That's what I need. I need to get off my so chest. Just a little preview. We got gun talk. What else you got over there? What yeah, else I've, I've got gun talk. I've got some health care talk. Okay. I've okay. got some Boy Scout talk. Oh, um, what is that about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got some sports talk. I got some some MMA stuff, football stuff. Call. He's never heard of this guy. Don't worry about it. But I'm gonna talk about that. Yeah, and not only that, but the whole thing. the whole uh, hypocrisy involved with this. I can't wait to talk about that. One. And then we just got other tidbits and, and facts. But, I like uh, it. I yeah. like it. What else you got there? Well, man, I, I, I want to take a second. I got a, I got a buddy of mine that's not doing real well. His name's Brian Atwell. Um, two weeks ago, he was in here, watched the whole, or not in here, but he was on uh, uh-huh. on live, watched the whole show with us. Um, and a couple days later, they found a, a bleed in the back of his brain. Ooh. Um, they transported him from uh, IU West to Methodist. He's been there ever since. Um, they've got him in a coma. They've been trying to take him off Man. life support, um, but they does, he doesn't want to breathe on his own right now. The guy's, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say he's 45 years old. Um, hey, that sucks. He's, uh, you know, he's 20 years uh, retired from uh, IMPD, and Man. it's just, it's just one of those situations. Where you're like, how the hell does this even happen to somebody like that? I don't know, that well, young? Brian. Brian, get well, buddy. Uh, hopefully, keep fighting, and, and, and hope to see you back here sometime, hanging out with us. I, I'd really like to see that. So. Hey, we got Zach Hendricks going to hit you up for the gumball head. He said Come he's on, on his Zach. way. Come on, Zach. He's on First his way. On me, brother. One more. Who else? Joey. What? Come down, man. You come down from Fishers. It'll be all right. You can come down. Uh, we got we got we got Pete over here. He's gonna keep an eye on his feed so that we can make sure we can talk to you guys over there too. Yeah. So whoever got any questions, you gotta put them on here so we can understand what you want to hear about. And any of you people over there, Peanut Gallery, I see on your phone talking. Anyway, um, wow. Let's start off. You know, I always my my first and foremost uh, authority. One thing I like to talk about. What's happening, Rex? Is uh, we're gonna go inside the cage. Let's do it. Inside the case. It was a big weekend. It was a good weekend, man. You know, finally a pay-per-view. A lot of the last few UFCs have been the fight night, the free ones, but the the, pay, the, the, the pay-per-views are the good ones. So uh, we had a good one, Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee. That was a great fight. And mm-hmm. Like I said, Tony Ferguson is one of the best fighters you're going to see out there. Really good in all aspects, on, on his feet, on the ground, crazy takedowns, um, crazy submissions from takedowns. He does all kinds of good things. So... Um, he was in a fight versus a very good Kevin Lee. Now, Tony Ferguson was able to win third round submission, but if you really watch it, um, a lot of people thought that Kevin Lee just kind of got tired. He didn't expend a lot of energy slamming people. A lot of people thought maybe he wasn't in the greatest of shape. But if you really watch a fight, um, I think what it is is I looked at Chael Sonnen, and he kind of broke it down like this. Your first time as a main event fighter, things change, you know. Yeah. The pressure is different. I mean, the, the number of people watching you is different. You know, there's a lot of pressure. A lot of people think that, you know, if you're in good shape, you should be able to fight no matter what. That's not true. I mean, if you are really training hard, you can train all day, every day. But if that pressure is there, it's just a little bit. So he lost. He looked a little tired at the end, but it was just a great fight. Uh, besides that, you had who really, there's no, we're not even a debate anymore, I think. You got Demetrius Johnson. He's probably Man. the best fighter in the world. If you've never seen this clip, please look it up. Please. Demetrius Johnson versus Ray Borg. He, it's in the fifth round. He's dominating the whole fight, so he could just coast through, not do anything. He picks him up, 
slams him, and as he suplexes and slams him down, he, he goes right to an armbar. Somehow pulls an arm. An armbar, it was like a transition I've never seen. Slams to an armbar and about broke his arm. And well, Ray fought out. Did, like, did, uh, he did you watch out. his interview? No. Wait, In the wait, interview, wait, Razor is. Uh, Demetrius. Demetrius. He's, no. like, he's like, he's like, yeah, I pull it off the gym all the time. Really? As soon as I had him up, I knew, I knew it was there. Wow, I've never even seen that. <laughs> never seen that. Definitely picks it up, slams him down, and puts it right in the armbar. Uh, what's happening, Sean? But anyways, like I never seen that before. But to do it at that level at that time in the fight it was amazing. So I, I, I thought Ray would have to get really lucky to beat him. It didn't happen. So um, he's you know now past Anderson Silva as the all-time most defendingest title holder. So pretty impressive there. Now the other fight we kind of talked about at one point was uh, we're doomed. And he was supposed to fight Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis hurts his back the day of the fight. I don't know how that happened. He must have ate so much after weigh-ins. He hurt his back. Well, it, was a day, it was a day of the fight. The day of the fight. I knew it was last he minute, but I didn't realize back. that. Yeah, so they had a few hours, and I thought the fight was over. They got a guy named Walt Harris who was supposed to fight somebody else to step up and fight. Mm -hmm. So he lasted about 65 seconds, uh, got arm barred, which, you know, it sounds bad, but he stepped up and did take the fight against uh, – the former champ. Congrats to him. Um, I, I watched that, and that was the, that was the oddest arm bar. Yeah, I mean, he's from, a, he's slick, dude. I mean, we're doing the slick. So he's on his back, and, and I, I, don't, I watched the replay probably ten times, yeah. trying to figure out how yeah. this happened. And I mean, it looks like maybe he had a rear naked choke on him. Like maybe yeah. that would yeah. work. <laughs> don't know where the arm bar came from. That was just. I don't know. That was some that was some wizardry as far as I'm concerned. Well, Doom is one of the few guys who's very slick off of his back as a heavyweight, but he's also can hit hard. I mean, yeah. he's not a great technical striker, but he has some skills on his feet. He can knock people out, and he is slick on the ground. One of the slickest guys on the ground. So he did a great job. He didn't have the opponent he wanted, but it doesn't matter. You know, he, did, sure. he did what he needed to do. So, I mean, 65 uh, seconds, I mean. Now, yeah, that was great. Unfortunately for everybody involved, we don't have a UFC this weekend, which is rare anymore. Um, we got a Bellator coming up the week after that uh, next week, and we have a UFC. So we're going to break both of those down next week, but that's what we have for this. So, All right. I like it. Any questions about anything, let us know. What's going on, Sean? Let's um, hear them. Besides that, we do have a lot of NFL news going on. So not even nearly stuff. We'll talk about that later. But, you know, looking at – you know, a lot of good teams right now. And here's a, here's a great thing about this NFL season. I don't know who's going to win things. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows. There's a lot of parity, way more parity than normal. Yeah. Philadelphia is 4-1. Green Bay is 4-1. Denver is 3-1. Carolina is 4-1. Atlanta is 3-1. Uh, Kansas City's the only team undefeated at 5-0. and and I, What's that? What's oh, oh, yeah, go check. We're, we're going to be on. Oh, we're. City 360 we're, we're, we're live all over on about, on about four different Facebook networks yeah, right now. And live on City 360 TV. That's a great point. Anybody wanting to watch us on City 360 TV, we're there. Well, how what's going on, Tom? How you doing? Um, now, like I said, the parity in this league is, is unbelievable this year. I don't know who's going to do well from one week to the next. It's hard to tell. Um, so that's very, very interesting. I know we do have some really bad teams. We got... Cleveland 0-5, New York Giants 0-5, San Francisco 0-5. I mean, those are the only teams that, like, the Colts are beating right now for some reason. And the only team that's won one, they won one. Them. Arizona's won one if that's against us. So it's not good for us, but whatever. <laughs> not good, but, you know, what are you going to do? I've, I've, I've written a season off for the Colts as far as uh... – Hold on a second, man. Not, um, I'm, yeah, you're right. What are you going to do? Okay. All right, nobody can hear us. Okay. That place, how's everybody doing? Uh, yeah, there everybody. we go. Now, another thing I noticed was um, I thought this was very interesting. You know, this this uh, the other day I saw Trump threaten to stop these tax breaks. A lot of people don't realize this happened. The NFL gets these tax breaks somehow as a nonprofit, but they were getting in the last ten years they've got a tax break of about six point eight billion. That's with a B, not million, billion. So he threatened to try and stop that. Now the NFL, if, if their response to that was, you know what? Maybe we should make a rule where everybody stands up here. That's that was their response. But you know, yeah. here's, here's my opinion. What I'd like to hear about that is, I, I say no. I don't care, man. It's too late for that. I mean, to me, I think people have shown what's going on here. They've really showed their hand, and you know, to me, they seem entitled, out of touch with reality, unappreciative, spoiled. You know, they need to be humbled a little bit. Thank you, buddy. So, 
uh, in my opinion, I would like to see these guys take a little bit of a haircut. I'd like to see them all of a sudden lose. Oh, you were supposed to get six million this year. You're going to get two. Oh, hold on. What? What do you? You know, kind of understand how lucky it was. I would love for that to happen because God, there's. Can you pull that back a little bit? Go ahead. There's nothing like just being preached to by these elitists. I know. It's and, like you and, don't. And, know. and, 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 and point, point the finger at us. Talk about you're not paying your fair share. With with this going on, we don't need to subsidize the NFL. The NFL is is, is, is it's it's registered as, as an NPO, non-profit, which non-profit. which I, 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 non-profit organization. I feel like it's absolutely ridiculous. Good. I don't understand how this is real. Taxpayers built Lucas Oil. It's happening all over the place. You know what? If no, I'm 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 over it. There's no there's no reason for that. And at this point, up, that's, I mean, that, that's sort of blatant disrespect. Brandon Hager, but I would love to see it all go away. Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, I would not mind. I just want them to actually have to, like, you know, I, you know understand they are What's really, up, really, Warren really McDonald? fortunate, and they don't need to be like talking down to everybody and act like they're. They don't understand how fortunate they are. I don't think you know, and they're they're kind of rubbing their, you know, they're, they're just kind of. Uh, very disrespectful to everybody else involved back in the way they do, in my opinion. Well, if you don't, don't believe know. exactly what I believe, then you're racist. Yeah, and that's my, that, that I mean, that's a bad thing. I don't like that. That's pretty much what, what, what it came down to. And you see people like like Delaney Walker well, coming out and saying, know, well, if you don't like it, you don't have to come. Don't come. Then I won't. Well, you'll we're, lose we're, after money, buddy. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm ready I'm for cool it to happen. that, but are you cool with that? You're not going to be cool with that, I promise. You know, so. but, you know what, though? I mean, I, here's the thing. With, with, with a lot of these athletes – Part of me says they probably don't know any better. They, they've been they have the this thing, stuff drilled man, down their throat the so thing. much. I've been a professional athlete. And I know how when I'm in that environment, people treat you. And now, when I was younger, it wasn't the case. Like I wasn't. A, there was no MMA. There was no pro fighting. But I can imagine if you were a, a really great football player or basketball player when you were young in high school, you were treated like a god and a king back then. You got every break. Everybody kissed your ass the whole time. And then you went to college, and they're treating you the same. And yeah. so then all of a sudden you're an adult. So as growing up as a kid, and then you all of a sudden you're an adult, you've been treated differently than everybody else. You don't even understand what normal people go through. So to me, you might just want to thank everybody for paying your salary and be happy. I, I mean, quit trying to – you know, I'm going to bring this up later talking about, you know, actors and actresses. And, they, and I try not to listen to any of those things people say, but – um, I did like something that Mark Wahlberg said the other day. A lot of you people know him as Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch. That's not him anymore. It's Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Get he, it right. he said, he's like, look, you know, we're paid to entertain people. We're paid to have people watch what we do and like it. They don't want to hear. I mean, it's not that we're not paid to educate people. We're not paid right. to give them our opinion because we're stupid. I mean, he didn't say it like that, but that's what I took it at. Anyway, they are stupid. They they are entertaining, but I don't want to hear what you have to say, buddy. I'm sorry. I mean, these these people live live in such echo chambers. Exactly. Where, you know, it's it's it's, it's like the, the 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 lady who says, "I don't know how Hillary Clinton didn't win. I don't know anybody who didn't vote for her." Exactly. Oh, what, well, what, well, what, does, what does that tell you? Or like, what's that Gwyneth Paltrow? She's like, "Oh, I don't know how my job is so much harder than most people." Do. <laughs> they, I was like, they don't understand what I have to do. I'm like, you. I've been at stuff like that, and those people go, "I want a coke," and it's right there, and they have somebody who pay to walk over and hand them a coke. Yeah, you don't have a hard life, lady. I'm sorry, you got four people taking care of your kids. You know, no, you don't cut your own grass. I don't want to hear your how hard your life is. I've got to go pretend to be somebody else. Yeah, poor little kid. I'm sorry. And I don't you're want... like a kindergarten. That's what they get paid. I mean, they they they, they pretend yeah. they're somebody else. You're, you're, you're I don't want to be lectured to by those people. I don't want to hear what you. That's what say drives me life. nuts more than anything else in this world. Yeah, these. You know this this this, this virtue virtue signal sig- I can't talk virtue signaling this holier than thou attitude that they have and and, and bow down to me. Gumball and, head, Brandon. Gumball you, head. You got one right there. What's that? You got another gumball head right there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I see. Thank you. Somebody asked me I was ringing. It's, oh, gotcha. I wish it was zombie does brother gumball head. Hey, thank you, buddy. <laughs> I thought you were. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you, buddy. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, so, it's, it's, yeah. it's all unearned moral superiority. We're better than you, and we're going to tell you how you, how you need to live. And Okay, yeah, I know. So that's what we got going on with the NFL right now. Um, I'm interested to see what happens. I'm interested to see they've been losing some um, viewership. They've been losing sponsors. Um, I'd like to see what happens here, man. I'd mm-hmm. like to see who breaks first because, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, in my opinion, you know, like or dislike Trump, however that goes, but – I mean, he's attached himself, in my opinion, to the winning side when you're saying, you know, you got to stand up 
you know, for the flag. Because, I mean, to me, you know, doing a lot of stuff with UFC, I did a lot of stuff with, with a lot of military. And to me, you know, I have a lot of respect for those guys. And, and, and to me, the, the two most disrespectful things you can do, one of them would be burning a flag. The second thing would be to disrespect the anthem while they're doing it. I mean, I, I went to a game last time, and I looked down, and everybody stood for the national anthem. And this was like at a basketball game, thinking, what do people work standing? I mean, back when uh, in the day, I think the veteran would be like, "You need to stand up and respect." Your Absolutely. Hand. Absolutely, that's just 100%. a slap in their face, in my opinion. So I get why they're upset, and anybody else who's not for that, to me, you're kind of disrespecting all that. So I think if you're on that side of it, you're kind of on the wrong side of this when you're not going to win it. You know, I've, I've I've been told by friends of mine on the other side that I I, I was going to be on the wrong side of history on this, and and uh, I, and, and, and I t- I take that stuff when I hear stuff like that, I take it seriously. I really try to put enough thought into it to, and, and I, I, do, I do not see in, in a way where that's where that's where that is okay. Um, it's, just, it's 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 just not there. It's it, it's simple. And if you, if you have a message that you, that you want to get out, get it out. These these players they're saying, oh, well, they don't have they don't have any other way to do it, and this has been the way they no they they chose to do it here. They have every outlet. They have they have got a, a microphone in their face. Every day, I mean, have me, every it, opportunity to say everything they want to say. You know I, this wasn't the venue for a it. lot of very, very prominent athletes. If they want to say it, they could call a specific press conference or anytime anybody wants to talk to them, they yeah. can talk about that. You know, anything besides what they're doing, I, I, I don't like. I mean, it just it, it's, to me, it's just disrespectful to people, and I think a lot of people feel the same. So I think they're going about the wrong way. If that's really their message, that's what. And my, here's another problem, you know. You're talking about the guy who started this Kaepernick, and then you start talking about, you know, who he likes and who he supports, you know, the Fidel Castro's and the Che and this different thing oh like that, God. and the pink socks. It's like, eh, you're kind of losing me on that. When you talk about human rights, and then you start saying, yay, Fidel Castro. Oh, well, this guy is saying, oh, my I hero. I like his educational policies. What? I mean, that'd be like saying, well, I just like Hitler's educational policy. You can't just pick and choose stuff. You know what that guy did to people who disagree with anything he said? He put them in jail or killed them. Yeah, you, you don't have to disagree. You, you can't do that. I mean, you can't. If you're in his way. You can't talk about to... human rights and be pro-Castro. I mean, the dude was a dictator for over 50 years. You know, he said they're going to have free elections. Never did. I mean, they had free elections, but he was the only guy running, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you cannot. You lose all credibility when you see you start talking that. And, and, and now that's your spokesperson. That's what you guys are saying. For a guy who clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. And I can't, if, if that's it's, all you got to say, I got nothing for you. I'm sorry. It's so funny because I, I, I remember people like Sean Penn and Danny Glover and a few others praising uh, Venezuela and uh, uh, Chavez. For a couple hours, Dave, come on out. And uh, it, it, it was, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world because they were just praising this, this, this socialist dictator. Right, in Venezuela, Jason. 25 years ago, Venezuela was a, was the richest country in South America. Oh yeah. And Chavez comes in and says, "Nope, that's all mine." And, and you're right. And 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 you know, for the benefit of the, of, of the Bernie people out there, there is no income inequality there. Everybody's poor and <laughs> yeah, yeah. killing their neighbors to murder their pets so that they have something to eat. Um, Man, you know, you know what's funny is I saw some like uh, some of the people here, and they were like, you know, the more the socialist, communist people from America, and they're like, they were like, would well, you rather have that style? And they go, that'd be fair. Everybody's poor, and everybody's waiting in line. That'd be fair. I'm like, you would not make it there for ten minutes. Dude. I don't know what you're. I wouldn't about. make it there. Oh, that's no, I, but that's my point. You would eat. <laughs> he thinks that'd be great to be waiting in line to get to find a pigeon to kill, or, or you know, get whatever food the government has because they have no money. No food, nothing. I, I, I think you're delusional if you think that's a good way of living. You know, Venezuela has more oil reserves than we have in the U.S. Yeah, but the problem Venezuela. is when oil dropped down, they just, they got nothing now. Well, it's, it's not even that oil, oil dropped down. It's it's all going to one place. It's all centralized. Um, there There is no market there mean, unless unless he says there's a market. You mean uh, government-ran economies, centralized economies don't work? I never heard that. Shocker. Before. Shocker. Yeah. Central planning, not such a good thing. I mean, I don't know. could have learned from, you know, Mao or Stalin or Hitler, but, you know, there's, there's we haven't a, learned a lesson yet. There's a lot of lessons here. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back to, uh, anyway, let's go to uh, college football. Anybody like college football here? I love college football. Okay, okay we're going to run out a couple of the, uh, we got Alabama number one. I don't know if you guys knew that. They're pretty good. Clemson, um, I would like to see that matchup again. Clemson's looking yeah. pretty good. Penn State up at number three now. 
Um, you have Georgia number four, Washington five, TCU six. But what I think is pretty neat, you have Washington and Ohio State in the top ten. Washington, uh, Wisconsin, I'm sorry, not Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ohio State, so you got three Big Ten teams in the top nine. That's pretty good. Oh, they always say the Big Ten sweep, whatever. It's about time. It's been it's been a while since Big Ten's been a. And we got Ryan over here talking go for Michigan. I don't know. Michigan is playing IU this weekend, so they're probably in a little boop, bit of trouble. Should be interesting. So, <clears throat> all right. So we're gonna get a little section on going on right now that we like to call the feel good. You know, a lot of people like say all we are is negative. All we do is mean and yell and talk bad about people. That ain't true, man. You know, I'm, you okay, get it's some good true. stuff in there. Sometimes. It is, but I try and be nice too. So, uh, feel good story. And this is kind of a backhanded feel good story. It's not even really a feel good story, I guess, but I think it's feel good. I'm happy about it. So, what you got? You guys noticed um, it was about a month or two ago when we had uh, a lady, she was a nurse, and she was on social media and she was being arrested by the police officer. Now, what happened was she was in the nighttime representative. She was a nurse at a hospital, and there was a car accident. And this guy was put in that car. She was unconscious. And what they said was, we need to get a vial of this guy's blood. We're going to draw his blood. And she goes, well, our policy for you guys, the police, is we can only take his blood if he says, okay, he's unconscious, if he's under arrest, or if you guys have a warrant. So that's the policy we legally have with you guys, okay? And he goes, no, I need his blood or I'm going to arrest you. She's like, I, I can't do that. That's the policy. And he arrests him. Well, that guy's been fired now. So I was Good. very happy to see he got fired Good. because if you saw it, it wasn't only that he arrested her. It was his demeanor. And he was like, I'm a police officer. Woman. You got to do what I say. It's the way I took it, you know. Well, it, was, um, it was a very good He was asking for it in the first place. Don't, I'm, it, I'm sorry. Last time I checked, they had a Fourth Amendment. And that is the policy that the police worked out with that, you know, with the, with the hospital. You have to have a warrant, you know, go get a warrant if that's a problem. No, I don't want to do that. Well, okay, then arrest this guy. Well, I'm not going to, you have to do one of those three things, you know. Yeah. It's not up to me. And if she, if she did that, she probably gets fired and maybe lawsuits against her. She couldn't have done it. So, I mean, now this was in Salt Lake City. So this guy has um, been let go, which... I'm happy to see because of the way he treated her, it was it was unacceptable. And now, and the guy who told him to get, to do that, he was being told to do that by his lieutenant. He's been demoted all the way down, like to a private first. Wait, I, I I forgot something. We're gonna, I'm gonna take a fact check. Andy Duncan, you're absolutely right. Go Irish. Sorry. <laughs> Who's Notre Dame got this week? Oh, that's and, a good and, and question. Their, they are back they, home for two weeks in a row, I believe. They still got a pretty good ranking. Uh, um, they're but, uh, 19th last time I looked. I thought they were higher than Wow. But, Come on, Irish, do better. I know. You know, that that, that loss, they lost to Georgia hurt, but at the same time, losing to Georgia, I think it was a quick 2019, and, they're, and, and they're, they're mopping the floor with some top-notch teams. So I don't I don't feel terrible about that loss they too much, too much anymore. Uh, oh God, yeah, that's right. We got we got USC this week. No problem. That's always California. A rough one. Get out of here. That's always a rough one. All right. So what else do I got? I got uh, a guy from North Korea defected. Surprisingly, he didn't get killed, but he defected, and um, he was in their hacking division, their computer, and, and what he came out and said that they are so far advanced. What they can do with hacking is beyond imagination in North Korea. They have hacked. Uh, some of the South Korean documents, and they found stuff within the U.S. talking about war plans against North Korea and assassination plans for Kim Jong. So be careful what you put out there, though. North Korea might, might kill. What's I mean, happening, here, here, here's, here's the thing with that, as far as North Korea goes. I think they could have all of our battle plans and still probably couldn't I'll, do a thing I, about it. I'd show them to you. Here you go. What are you going to do yeah, about like it? There's, yeah, I mean... I mean, we're, we're holding spades, and they're... It is just funny, though, that they that they have been able to hack in like that. I mean, I guess when you have nothing else, and, you know, you probably tell the guy, if you can hack into this, I'll give you a piece of chicken or something or some food. You know, the guy's probably going to do it. I think it's the other way around. I think if you don't do it, you're going to die. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I'm trying to be positive here. People say we're too negative. I don't know. I mean, you're, 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 you're dealing with a lunatic over there, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me got now Back to Utah. We were just in there for that girl. Mm -hmm. uh, Utah. We have West Jordan, Utah. We have a family 
uh, big family, a lot of kids, a lot of stuff going on there. They go to a corn maze and they walk around to the corn maze. It's fun for the kids, right? Well, not when you leave a three-year-old there. You left the three-year-old there for about 12 hours. So when you get home, I can see you almost leaving. I can say, hey, man, um, I forgot my kid. But when you don't notice for 12 hours, that's a problem. You come back don't to you do a head count if you have that many kids? I guess. Like <laughs> That's a whole different issue. doesn't know what's going on for a day. You lose a kid, you come back. We lost a three-year-old. You got one? Yeah, we got one. Can we have them back? That doesn't look good, man. I, I mean, know. you know, like. Okay, 12 hours is, is, is a bit long. Right. I'm sitting there thinking, when my boys were young, I lost my youngest at the Trevor Museum once. I, okay, I can, I can see that. <laughs> Not for 12 hours, or was it 12 no, hours? No, it was, it, was, it, was, it was about 10, 15. It was enough to where me, at, I think I was 25 at the time. Like I, I, was, I lost my shit. I was freaking out. Oh, yeah. I can see that, man. But, I mean, 12 hours is a little excessive, so... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe God. maybe they were like, I don't, I don't know what's going on in prison. So. so we're talking about Utah. We're out west. Let's hear what are, are, are we ready to jump in, 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 into the big news of the, of the last two weeks since we've been oh, on? Is that about Harvey? I'm talking, I'm talking about Vegas. Oh, we haven't talked about that yet? No, that was, we weren't on. Wow. Oh, wow. We were on. It was a couple okay. days after the yeah, last time we were on. We got a lot to talk about, then. What do you got for me, buddy? Uh, by, by now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that most people know what happened, at least in its, in its, in its most yeah, general I'm, terms. I think it's messed up. Yeah, make it up right now. So. Here, do this. Yeah. Uh, maybe I can turn it. Down. Nope. Sorry, technical difficulties. Stick, stick it there, there like that, and then we'll be. We're gonna get this stuff figured out. There we go. We're gonna get the sound yeah, figured out too. Yeah. One of these days, aren't we? I, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna operate under uh, from the see, assumption that most people know most of the things that happen, despite the fact that the story's changing. Quite a bit, so much so that what's up, in James? I can't even guarantee I have all the facts of the timeline. Um, you know what? They don't know the facts of the timeline. What and are you that, about? that really bothers me. I, I don't understand. But go ahead. Let's hear. Let's um, hear what you got. Before we dive in, real quick, I just want to give, give a big shout out to that place. Thanks for having us. We Thank appreciate you, that it. Place. Thank you. Hope everybody has a good time. Good also, here, Stack Pickle and. Uh, Scotty's down there on the on the Butler campus. We appreciate you guys sponsoring us there. as well. Can't wait to see that place. But I have been training, Brian. So down to the meat and potatoes of it. Not it was five hours after this ha this had happened. What was five hours? And Hillary Clinton is tweeting, not wanting to politicize the situation. What does she do? But 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 politicize it. And her tweets were quote: "The crowd fled from the sounds of gunshots." Imagine the best is if the shooter had a silencer, which the NRA wants to make easier to get. Not only does, does that make no sense because there was no there was no no suppressor used. Silencer, if you don't know what you're talking about, that, okay, whatever. There was no suppressor used. Um, it had nothing to do with the NRA. Obviously, it's a sick individual doing sick things, which is what sick people do. Um, it just it just drove me nuts. And her, her, her follow-up tweet was, our grief isn't enough. We can and must put politics aside, stand up for the NRA, and work together to try to stop this from happening again. Now, I would love if you put politics aside for five minutes, Hillary Clinton. You lost. You're out, of, you're out of political life. You can be a human, but I'm not 100% sure you know how. Now, here's a lot of my problem with, with what, what they're talking about with that. I mean... You know, even if, in my opinion, you know, even if you made you know, guns 100% illegal, you know, like I've noticed in Europe what they've been doing, they've been running over people with trucks. You know, and that was, a, I heard there was like fifteen to 20,000 people at that concert. Can you imagine if you took a semi and ran through the bears and just ran, no doctor all those people down? How many would you have killed? It would have been a lot. I don't know. My point is, you know, we've had guns in this country for, since before it was founded. We've always had a lot of guns. That's not the problem. These things didn't start happening to about 50 years ago. So there is a problem, but I think it's more a different aspect. It's like we're trying to take away guns. You're just going to basically, it's like if I hurt my back and you go, here's a pill to mass that pain, that shit ain't helping. No, you know, not at all. I'm still going to hurt my back 
if they take away guns, people are still going to kill people. So we got to deal with the root cause of the fat problem, not the problem of the gun. I think. I mean, now do people I think? I mean, maybe you don't people. need. I mean, and I don't even know what this bump stock thing was. Is it a bad thing? I, I get. I don't know enough about it. Well, here's 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 what I have up next on that. I've got actual. You know, a, a bump stock replaces a rifle standard stock, which is the part that's held against your shoulder. Uh, it frees the weapon to slide right back and forth rapidly, harnessing the energy from the kickback. Uh, so, shooter, so, it, so it fires a weapon. So it's going to a tr trigger assembly. This, the, the gun moves, but the stock stays still. And, and, and so it creates kind of a rocking motion so that when you pull, you pull the trigger, yeah, everything's right moving around the trigger assembly to create kind of a fully automatic feel. Now, the NRA came out and said that, that they would support uh, tighter restrictions on this device. That worries me. This device is similar devices to what they said. And that worries me because I, I see that as being a slippery slope. I feel like once you give in an inch, you know, the left, the left wants to take 16 miles. Um, and go back to, you know, earlier in the year with the Heller decision in the Supreme Court, the, the dissenting opinion held by four Supreme Court justices were that was that you didn't have the right to own a to personally own a firearm. That was literally the decision. Now, mind you, it's five six pages long, but four Supreme Court judges, wow. the dissenting judges, that that was their stance on it. Now, finally, Kennedy comes to the right side again. And both in the right direction. They must have not. They must have not had any more dirt on him. Maybe he got it after the last one. Well, yeah, he's he's, a, back if he's a wild card in that court, but yeah. but that that terrifies me. And so, you know, and, and going back to like the political season last year, um, I've said it. I've said it on here. I've told, I've told a lot of people Trump wasn't my guy. Neither, um, but I, I view it as if I, I voted for Neil Gorsuch. I needed that. I needed him to be to take over Anton Scalia's spot in the Supreme Court. Yeah, because for that Hillary decision, if there's a Hillary Clinton nominee on that court, we're done. Yeah, I, yeah. it's that serious. And I think a lot of people have felt the same way you did. So I mean, if nothing else, he's put somebody in there that you know. It's it you know it's it's, 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 it's terrifying. I'm ready. I'm ready for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to die. Who isn't? I, that's not a mean she thing. To, to, is that a mean thing to say? I don't know. I don't care. At this point, I don't care. He doesn't care. You heard she, right here. She, she needs to die. I Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I please. You. Just let it go. Or are retire. Here's the thing. is when she even talks, I'm like, what are you even talking about? You know? Uh, uh, it's like when, uh, what's her name? Uh, or uh, or uh, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, my Happy God. Time, I'm like, <laughs> this is sad. I feel sad for her. Honestly, know? I hope Nancy Pelosi sticks around for a while. She's, she's, because she's, 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 she's ineffective. And, God, she's hilarious. Oh, you it's, get a lot of material I listen to her, but I'm just like, what is, when you hear her talking, it's just like, dude, she can't get a sentence out sometimes. And she just bubble. I loved it. What I loved was when all those um, the dreamers came in out and all the Hispanic kids, like, chanted against her for 35 minutes and flustered her. She was shaking. She didn't know what to do. Oh, it's so funny. It's like, you created this monster, and now you got to deal with this stuff. So, Okay. So I get it back? Thank you. I'll be back in a minute, people. Oh. Keep watching. Can you? Can you turn it sideways? Will that work again? I don't know. There we go. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. That's a little better. I got room over this way, bro. We're still getting it figured out. We'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some good guys on our team here. Team, everybody's there got go. it. Uh, there we go. Look at you guys, man. Listen, that's going to be delayed a little bit. You guys taking care of us. I don't know what's happening. Things are going nuts. But good job. Thank you. We got it. We got it. All right. All right. All right. Now they probably can't hear me, but I'll just talk about it. Um, okay. So what I want to talk about after this is a little bit of, I don't understand what happened. I mean, one thing that bothers me more than anything is, is hypocrisy. You know, when people are hypocrites, I can't deal with that, man. If you're going to say one thing and do another, I got nothing for you, you know. And this Harvey Weinstein thing is, is just full of hypocrisy, man. So, first of all, I'm not even going to get into his political stuff. And, you know, when people say Trump is disrespectful to women, which he is in some ways. But, okay. But, then, but you guys are all about Harvey Weinstein? People knew about him for a long time, a long ass time. Everybody knew about this guy. Um, there were SNL skits. There were skits. There first were, of all, I mean, in 2013, Seth MacFarlane did a uh, not a skit. He did... 
the Oscars and they did the, the best actress award. You see this? Yep. The, like the, the Oscar for the best actress goes to five women. He goes, well, those are five women who no longer have to pretend they are attracted to Harvey Weinstein. And he said the reason he did that was it was out of pure disgust of him because Harvey Weinstein was hitting on his girlfriend, Jessica Burns at the time, and, and, and really making her uncomfortable. So he did that out of anger. He did it because he didn't like him, and everybody laughed because they knew exactly what he meant. Now, here's my problem with it. You have all these people coming out, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, Ashley Judd. They knew about it for years, but, you know, they're all about standing up for equality of women, unless it affects their career. I don't want to lose money, so I'm not going to do anything. Even though I can, I'm above that now. I'm in Hollywood. I can do whatever, but I'm not going to stand up for all these other people coming up because I still want like they can just go done something about it, and they didn't. That is the definition of hypocrisy. When you do that, but then you talk about oh Trump says and that. I mean, I, I can't deal with those people, man. I, I just they, they, you know, it's 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 not even doing something about it. What what bothers me the most is that you know you see Gwyneth Paltrow accepting an award. And thanking Harvey, call Harvey him, Weinstein. Call, you know, Meryl Streep called him a god. And, a god. And, and, and you have these young girls watching this, thinking, this is what I want to do with my life. This is how I get here. This is how I'm going to make this happen. And so what do they do? They they, they go they go to Harvey Weinstein. They, they take a seat on the casting couch. Yeah, um, exactly. At, at, at what point are you, are, 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 you, are you responsible? At what point you know something's going on? You're allowing it. You're making excuses for it. You're covering it up. At what point are you now responsible for the continued behavior? Um, oh, it drives me nuts. I think as soon, yeah. I mean, I would feel guilty. I would think if I knew something didn't do something about it. But these girls, are, okay, they, they they don't seem to care. They, I mean, they're they're gonna talk bad about them now. Yeah, we. I mean, he did this to me and he did that. Like, where were you when this was happening? To the next girl, and then it'd be like to me. You know, if there was a child molester and I did nothing about it and I knew about it, if you feel bad when he molested another kid and another kid and another kid, how do, how, do you, how do you people live with yourself and then have the audacity to talk about somebody else? Well, I can't support him. He's disrespectful to women. But yet you praise this guy. You praise Harvey at all times. And, and, and you, you did whatever he wanted because he helped your career. Oh, my God. I mean, what, what 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 it comes down to I just can't is, is it, as as far as the left's concerned, if you it, it's just like it's like, it's the if you don't agree with me, you're racist. Yeah. If you, if you agree with me, you're fine. It doesn't really matter what you do. If you don't agree with me, <coughs> you're racist, racist, sexist, big homophobe, xenophobe, whatever other phobe there is or is there is. It's it, it's ridiculous and it's Hollywood. And honestly, I'm tired of the virtual single. I'm tired of hearing from them. I'm tired of them telling me what they think I should believe, and if I don't believe it, I'm X, Y, and Z. Shut up and play your instrument. Shut up and act. Shut up and stay, stay in your, like in your spot said, on my TV. Well, well said, Marky Mark. People don't want to hear what you have to say. They want to be entertained by you. After that, shut the hell up and just do your thing, man. I don't want to hear what you have to say because you probably didn't graduate from high school. I don't care what you have to say. You know, you're not that smart, and, and you're going to tell me you know, how I should live my life when you're just, you know, you're some person who lives in La La Land, not even in reality. And you're going to tell me how to live? Shut up. Do you know who else I don't want to be preached to by? Who? Late night comedians. I, Jimmy Kimmel, you're on the man show, bro. I mean, you're on the man show doing all kinds of stupid stuff. Jumping on trampolines. Yeah, and, and you're going to talk to me about whatever. I mean, I don't care what you have to say, dude. I, you are a clown, and that's what you act like a clown and be quiet. You know, I mean, that's how you got to be known. Entertain people and be a clown that way. Don't tell me you're a political blog because I think you're half an idiot. So. No, he is. He absolutely is. And, and so I've, I've got a couple of quotes from his monologue. Let's hear it. Um, that, that I just want to kind of dissect a little bit. First one is, I guess our founding fathers wanted us to have AK-47s. That's the Second Amendment argument. All right. Well, first of all, the sec at, at, at the time the, the Second Amendment was written, all, all military weapons were included. Why? Because that was the military. If, you, if private citizens don't have weapons, there can be no militia. That's an easy one. Um, you know, he, well, men he mentions quick, that. Yeah. Before that, I got to tell people... You know, what people, a lot of people don't understand is people think talk about the Second Amendment. They're like, that's, you know, a, a thing designed to, to protect you in your home. No, it's not. I The way I view the Second Amendment is to protect me from the government. Absolutely. I mean, you look at people don't understand. The, 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 the framers knew how bad the governments were in all situations. The whole Constitution is about 
and taking people from the government. And that's what it is. Protecting it's not the protecting the me from you. It's about protecting me from the government. That's exactly what it is. It was called, they was chained to chain up the government. That's what the goal was. It wasn't to chain you for me or, or to do, it was to chain the government and not give it very much power because every time in the world the government gets a lot of power, it doesn't end. So that that argument holds no merit. It does, and it, and, and then you, they, I, on that same note, you know, people argue that um, well, what are you going to do? You have a couple rifles. You're not going to be able to hold off the, the U.S. military. And so that I, I, I kind of say bullshit because we've been seeing people hold off the U.S. military in Iraq and Afghanistan for about 12 years now, yeah, um, longer than that actually, I've, I've, almost 20 years. Um, <laughs> At what some year point, is it? I hadn't thought about that. You know? um, yeah, and, 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 and you've got insurgencies doing that. And yeah, that's, it, is, is it possible to beat the U.S. government? No, but we can hold our, our own well enough to prevent tyranny. And, 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 and that's what it's about. And hopefully we even come to that. But I mean, you know, here's the thing I've always noticed. That anytime they try and take over the people, they disarm them first, you know? I mean, Absolutely. So. You know what? If I, I hate bringing this up because I, I hate when other people do it, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's do it. Tomorrow. If Just get weird. If in if in 19 if it you know 1940 41 42 43, if the German population were armed, if the Jewish German population were armed, if the Jewish Polish population were armed, it would there wouldn't be a situation where the SS is coming in, knocking on your door, saying, "Hey, come with me." Might, might not have went down like that. Um, you know, it's it, it yeah. It's, needless to say, it's important, obviously. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel also mentioned, mes mentions that when a brown person with a beard kills people, we're ready for watch lists, spying, and phone tapping, but not when it's a white guy. Okay, first of all, he's talking about the norm versus an outlier in terrorist attacks. Um, you know, 74% of all terrorist deaths globally can be accounted for by four groups. ISIL, Boko Haram, the Taliban, and Al Qaeda. Um, it's it's pretty self-explanatory, but then again, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's an, is an idiot. Uh, yeah. He claims that all of these mass shootings were done with assault rifles. And and here's here, here's what I like to go to when I'm debating guns with the left. Um, you know, everybody everybody has 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 problems with the ghost gun, the scary looking gun. The assault rifles, the, oh, well, if you just didn't have the 30-round magazine, everybody would be fine and dandy. What they really, what the left really wants is to ban all guns. Don't ever get confused by that. Camel's nose under the tip. That's what they want. They wanted to, like, just start taking this, and they'll take that. And then, I mean, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're their end is to, is, is to eliminate all firearms. And so the only way to have an honest debate with them is, is to call them the carpet on it and make them admit it. And the way to do that is to point out, well, 80% of gun deaths in this country per year are done by handguns, yep. not by rifles. Yep. So the people killed by handguns don't matter as much as the people killed by rifles? Not to them. Oh, well, oh, well. So what you're really saying is that you want to ban all guns. No, it's just it's just an unpopular statement, but, that, but that's where the left is live. Um, and and the, the numbers just don't back their, their claims. Out of 11,000 people shot in 2012, 322 were killed by any kind of rifle. 322 out of 11,000. Wow, that's not a lot. <laughs> tell, tell me again, the, the rifles jumped, jumped out, jumped out, and, and pulled their own triggers. Um, and then Jimmy Kimmel says again, talking about "quote unquote" assault rifles, your ARs, your AKs, things like that. That there's no, there's no reason that that anybody would have those. They're, they're not even made for self-defense, which. Any gun aficionado will argue tooth and nail with you about. Um, you take take an AR-15. It's one of the easiest rifles to wield, shoot, almost no recoil. Any woman in her house could protect herself very, very easily with that thing um, without an issue. Guns do save lives. The left will tell you See, that, that they don't. That's the problem is they don't show the stats on a number of times people get saved by them. You know? Do you want to know? Yeah, I got it. I mean, but the um, last go of the ghost can really accurately look at how many times Something happened, they pulled out a gun, and, and the problem was over. There, there's a big spread here to, to, to leave for air. 
But uh, Professor James Q. Wilson at UCLA, he's a public policy expert. This is a quote from him. We know this. We know from Census Bureau surveys that something beyond 100,000 uses of guns for self-defense occur every year. We know from small surveys of a commercial nature that the number may be as high as two and a half to three million. We don't know what the right number is, but whatever the right number is, it is not a trivial number. Um, this is important because firearm ownership does far more societal good than, and than any evil that, that has come of it, especially in this country. Wow. That, I mean, two and a half to three million, that sounds more than I would have thought, but I mean, that's pretty impressive. Even yeah. if it's lower than 100,000, I don't care. I mean, that's still way more good than it's doing bad. Absolutely. We're talking about 11,000 gun deaths a year. You know what's funny when you, you know you look at what the gun was originally called. It was called the Great Equalizer because you know if you're not as strong, if you're a woman, or if you have a group coming at you, that's gonna stop people. You know, if there's five guys coming to me with a baseball bat and I pull out a gun, I can defend myself. So Absolutely. I'm not saying it's, it can't be used for negative, but so can the car, so can a lot of negative things, and you know. I, you know, are these things terrible that are happening? Yes, but like I keep saying, I don't think we go after the gun. That's not doing the problem. The problem is the person. We got to figure out what's going on with these people that's making them do that. Why are we not even trying to address that issue? Why are we focusing on what they're using instead of why they're doing it? I don't understand, really. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just not over Kimball on this thing. Um, more Kimball. So All he right. says uh, in February. Trump signed a bill making it easy, easier for me, for severe mentally ill people to buy guns. I, again, completely false. If you're going to talk like this, at least do your damn homework. Um, what, you know what, what what he's talking about is is a legislative bill that prevented an Obama era regulation. And and what but basically what that regulation was was a senior citizen who's on Social Security who says, "Hey, I need help with my finances." The government was able to come in and take and take their firearms without any due process for that. And this new bill says no. If before you take somebody's firearms for that reason, it has to go in front of a judge. Again, Fifth Amendment due process. I know that I know I know a lot of hates and you know hates these, these these damn rights, shit. but you know. But I mean, it, it, it only makes sense. But this is again just a just a false uh, just a misrepresentation of a truth from people who either don't know. Or are maliciously misleading people who also don't know any better. Because let's face it, your average Kimmel watcher. Well, first of all, it's probably late, so they don't have a job in the morning. You know, maybe they're on the West Coast. Very so true. Like, never mind. I take that back. So, um, hey, I got a question for you. What do you? You got? I mean, unless you're done with that, but oh yeah, we. What do you got on? Uh, we got some traction going on here. What kind of traction stuff do you got for me? Oh, I, mean, I do have traction. Are we on, are we on attraction? Well, I mean, I'm looking at our time here. We're getting yeah. close, so I mean, yeah, we're 50 minutes. <laughs> we got to get going. So we'll just talk forever. I know we will. It's 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 a problem. All right. Oh, okay. So I have a new favorite state legislator. I heard I heard you talk about this. Before. Okay, Mister Mister Jim Lucas. All right, Lucas Every, Oil guy. Is, no, is okay. he from Lucas Oil? No, I don't know. I don't, I know. I just do that. Um, he's a state representative. He's a Republican from Seymour, Indiana. Uh, wants to abolish handgun licensing. Uh, believes that a Republican-controlled General Assembly, as well as a governor, could could, uh, could make this that. happen. Yeah, absolutely. Some Some states states have that. Now, which, do you know which states have that? Off the top of my head, what I What I'd like to do is look at those states and see what the gun violence has, has, has turned to. Has that up or down? That's what I'd like to see. We'll look for that for next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, only, the, the opposition from Terry Curry, who's the American counter prosecutor, says uh, it serves as a very practical purpose. It serves a very practical purpose to us, and it provides us with one mechanism for tracking where a handgun has been. Now, now um, here, here's my thought of the whole thing. What I would like to see, I don't care who has a gun. If you legally have it now, if you are like a felon and you're not supposed to have a gun and you get caught with one, they you throw the book at those guys. You're in there for the next for 10 years. Something like that. I want people to go, oh, Jesus, what? 10 years for having a gun? I don't care if you use it. If you use it in a crime, it's 20. Something like that where I want people to be very fearful of illegally possessing a gun. Because I've been out there where I've seen people get pulled over with guns, have guns. Nothing's going to happen to them. And that ain't right. I mean, they're felons and they have drugs and guns. 
slap on the wrist. You need to go away for some time. If, if, if they think you're committing that, use that for a crime, not supposed to have it. Those are the people I don't want to have guns, and they need to have a crime. Now, let me ask you something. Let me, let, 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 let me follow up on this a little bit, because... I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate. That's what I want, buddy. Kind of, I'm kind of not. Anybody ask enough questions? Um, so you you agree that you do not want felons to have firearms, right? Now, felons cannot have firearms in this country. It's a lifetime ban. You have a felony, lifetime ban. I would have said it depends on the felony, but go ahead. Um, well, and, and that kind of goes into my – because I've made an argument with, with, with a good number of my friends – an Eighth Amendment argument, actually, which is uh, protection against cruel and unusual punishment, that giving somebody a life sentence or a ban of never be able to never be able to have a, a constitutional right to own a firearm could be considered cruel and unusual. Okay. All right. What up, Stacy? Too good to Thank see you. you, buddy, man. How you been? Who else we got there? Sun kill. He said hammers kill. <laughs> Hammers kill 500. That's my that's that's a guy, Stacy. By the way, buddy, my he says hammers kill 500 people a year. We need to stop those from being so. <laughs> there we go. So, um, what we what we talking about here? Uh, felons. Not okay, one. okay. So, my point of that is, how about this? Then? If you're a felon, you're allowed to own like let's say a shotgun or something, but it has to be in your house because you want home protection. That'll protect your home. Yeah. I guess it might be different if you're not in your home, then, but I mean, I'm just saying that I, it, if you were, I would say if you have something in your house, that would be a different story. Now, if you need a gun to go from A to B, maybe you're living the wrong kind of lifestyle anyway, but I mean, you can't do it. Here's a problem. I do understand why I don't want a bunch of criminals out there with guns. Sure. I do understand that. So, I mean, but if you have one in the in your own house or no, I don't have a problem with that. So yeah. if you have a shotgun in your house, I got no problem with that. And, and, and I'm with you. But and if and you're outside in your car, I, I do have a problem. I both sides of this argument because you know, at the same time, if you have a domestic violence conviction, it doesn't matter if it's a misdemeanor. You can't own a gun. I got no problem with that because um, yeah, you really. I mean, that's something. It depends on the. I don't like these blank blanket statements that just encompass everything. That doesn't make any sense. And it, and it does. And, and and that's why, you know, like I said, I've, I've made eight men. Sorry. It's not me. What me. So uh, we're hiring a sound guy. Anybody? Applications? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I've, I've, I've made that argument. I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, I think it's a good argument. I have a hard time. I will lose a hundred percent of the time in the court of public opinion. Um, but a life sentence bugs me, um, I mean, on, on, I, I on a level that. of principle. I can see that. So um, there. same guy, Jim Lucas. All right. What so what has <laughs> Jim got for us? Buddy? So this is the best thing I've heard all day. He drafted a bill that would require professional journalists to be licensed by the state police. Um, now, now, hang on, just, just, just follow me on this one. All right, Lucas uh, had the measure drawn up earlier in the year and said he may file it to drive home a point about gun rights. Um, if it was, he said if it was irresponsible, with, I'm sorry, if I was irresponsible with my handgun and as the media was with their keyboard, I'd probably be in jail. Uh, the proposal would requ require professional journalists to submit an application to the Indiana State Police, be fingerprinted as a part of the process, and pay $75 for a lifetime license. And those with, with a felony or domestic battery convictions would be prohibited from getting a license. Does this sound familiar? I know, but I, I'm just trying to equate the, I mean, there where you're trying to get away from somebody being able to make a living, in my opinion. It's, it, 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 it's a tongue-in-cheek bill. And this is why he's my favorite, because he's just, he's just kind of being a smart ass about it. Um, he's saying if you're going to make people jump through all these hoops to express their to, sure. to have their constitutional right to own a firearm, why wouldn't you do it for the First Amendment? Why wouldn't you make people jump through hoops for the Fifth Amendment? Yet you get no due process until you've done proper paperwork. Or how about the Eighth? I mean, or the yeah. Tenth? You I name see. it. I'm a, I'm a big fan. <laughs> of the Tenth Amendment doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. So, uh, unfortunately, in today's age, it's 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 difficult. And if you people don't know what we're talking about with the Tenth Amendment, please look it up and understand it's not a real thing anymore. Which is probably my favorite. That was my biggest problem with Lincoln. He, I, in my opinion, what's he got rid of the Tenth Amendment? In my opinion. So basically, basically the Tenth Amendment. My understanding of it 
and I could I, I wish I could recite it verbatim, but I can't, is that all powers that aren't granted to the federal government by the Constitution are therefore delegated to the states. And he said, and the powers in the Constitution are few and enumerated. So there's a few, like I said, the design was to chain the government up. So they said, these are the few powers you guys have, and this is what you're allowed to do. Anything else you can't do, it's up to the state. We don't do that, though, so I don't want to get on to it. All right. Uh, Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts. Are no longer the Boy Scouts. They They're are the, the Boy and Girl Scouts. Boy and Girl Scouts. Um, here's, here's my problem with that. They said the girls could join the Boy Scouts. You have the Girl Scouts. We don't want to be in the Girl Scouts. I'm like... Now, I thought that was a thing, like, you have to have something similar for the girls to do, but they say they don't want to, so, now, but I've talked to some people, and they say part of the good thing about the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts was the girls can do what they want, and it's just girls. They don't have to worry about boys being there. They don't have to worry about that. You know, they might not act a certain way because the boys are up. Same thing with the Boy Scouts. They might want to be boys and feel different if there's a girl there, so... I'd be like, now in a fraternity, do you have to let girls in? A sorority, do you have to let boys in? Where is we going to draw the line Sign now? Me up. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll join a sorority, I guess. I'm in. But where do you draw the line here? I'm not understanding what, what is this, happening. This, this is the Boy Scouts caving to. Kill the, their membership because they're struggling. No, they're, 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 they're going to kill their membership because there they're, they're going to be parents who are going to pull their boys out. Now, the way it was described to me from what I got from it was. That for the Cub Scouts are going to, the individual troops can decide if it's going to be a all boys or if we're going to have a separate girls Cub Scouts or if we're going to have a co-ed Cub Scouts. Um, and then as they get older, there'll be two separate. There'll be a boys Boy Scouts and a girls Boy Scouts, and it allows girls to achieve the rank of Eagle Scout if they completed. I heard that's what it was all about. Eagle whatever, they, whatever, whatever they're 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 competing completing. Can, can I don't like know the what the pick of this yet. They just kind of come up with their own like different level like that. I don't understand. It. I mean, can they have like a separate group? But I don't know. Like, I don't know what the Girl Scouts advanced, entails. Advanced Girl Scouts. I don't know. I don't know that they do things like I was. Like I was in Boy Scouts, and I don't know that the Girl Scouts do things like the Boy Scouts do. I think that would be a better solution. Would be to step up the Girl Scouts itinerary, and you know, teach them those things. But you also have to remember, like when I was in Boy Scouts, like, it was competitive. Like we competed against each other at things, and a lot of it, a lot of it was was physical competition. And now you're going to introduce girls into something like this. Is this going to be really good for them? Um, you know, I I don't know. I'm I don't feel real strongly about it, but at the same time, yeah. it just it just goes me the wrong it way. It sounds funny. I don't know if I I haven't really thought it through yet. I just heard it today. But I don't know. Yeah. But All right. So next thing on traction is Broad Ripple becoming a new downtown. Um, have you been to Broad Ripple lately? No. I have not. Okay, well, I mean, like, um, so they right across the street from CVS, they built these really nice apartments. They have a fresh time market down there. Um, you know, there, there, there's there's been a lot of a lot of business revival in through there. It was just kind of an open ended question I found. Um, you know, but there's still a crime issue in Broad Ripple. For me personally, when I go out in Broad Ripple, I don't feel the safest. I feel like I'm kind of watching around because you know, last few years have been a bunch of shootings through there. Um, I mean, what? I mean, it's kind of almost like like down. It's becoming like downtown light, though, because the high rises are going downtown. Downtown living, you're either it's a, you either are paying through your nose or you're in the hood. Um, so Broad Ripple kind of offers kind of a step down from that. I mean, what do you, what, what do you think? Is that going to be a is that going to be a thing? Or uh, I really don't think so, man. If you look at downtown now, it is getting really kind of hot. You know, if you want to live downtown, it's going to cost you some money. A lot of young professionals there. A lot of a lot of money's going in there. If you want to get a place there, it's going to be pretty expensive. So I don't see Broad Ripple doing that anytime in the near future. If you want to get there, it's going to be much more affordable. Uh, different type of clientele. So, yeah. yeah. Um, now remind me, where'd you go to high school? Southport. You went yeah. to Southport. Okay. Yeah, is South. that is that is that Marion County? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't go to school down here. I went to Belmont High School in Decatur, Indiana. But right on. Franklin Central uh, Pike right and Speedway. Okay. Are the only traditional Marion County high schools to receive an A rating from the Department of Education? Wow. Um, yeah, I knew several when you did. Nearly half of the schools in the state that were able to get a rating rated A. That's all schools. But uh, but 42 of the 65 IPS schools that received a letter grade were given a D or an F. Wow. Not surprising. Not surprising, but wow. I mean, that's. 
that's really serious in my mind. That's not good, man. Um, you know, in a city that that's hit 100, 106 or 108 murders this year already, um, we've got kids growing up where, where, where they're not able to get a decent education. It's kind of it's, it seems like one's feet into the other in my in my mind. I mean, that's the way my mind works. But, but you know what? I don't care what anybody says. I do not blame the schools for any of this stuff. I blame the parents because you can have the best school in the world. If the parents don't care, it's not going to matter. So, you know, it, it, the schools can only do so much. You yeah. know, if you don't have parental involvement, you can have the worst school if you got good parents and, and they're caring about it. That's why, in my opinion, Catholic schools do so well because you're like, I'm paying eight grand a year, you, your ass better get to school. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll testify that. I went to Catholic school for six years. Exactly. So you have to understand without parental involvement, a great school can't do it, man. I mean, kids do not do the work. You can't stop. I mean, what are you going to do? So. I, I mean, I've been to some of these inner city schools, especially elementary school. They do a great job. The kids listen. They're well behaved. They, they're dressed nice in their uniform. Everything's good. Get to the middle school. They've been in a bad environment for 12 years. They don't care anymore. And, and the, the house and the environment beats that niceness, good kid out of them. I mean, I think they're good when they're young, and they become not good because they're a product of their environment. So. Yeah. You know, if you don't have parents that are involved, you have single mothers, you don't know any better who are raising kids, you don't have this, but that's what you're going to get. I'm sorry. And and, and, and I, I agree with, with, with the parenting being being a huge role in that. Huge I agree with that 100%. Um, yeah, you know, well, unfortunately, good, though, I, you know, we can't go, we as citizens can't go in and say, hey, you need to be involved with, 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 your, with your children's education. Um, one thing we can do is institute, and I believe in Indianapolis, there is a school choice variants um, but I but I, I mean I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that I believe that these schools should be competing to have these children there um, and if, if they're not willing to compete they're gonna lose enrollment ship they're gonna lose funding and and heads heads, heads need to roll um, yeah. if you have ineffective teachers you know they need to go you gotta give a quick shout out to Mary Shaw and Lacey Kaiser. What's happening, people? Thank you for watching. I'm Mary and Lacey. If you have any questions for us, please throw it out there because um, I'll answer them. I, I might, you might not like the answer, but I'll give it. I don't care. Yeah, I will too. Yeah, I'm in. I like it. Um, I want to give a little award to somebody though. Yeah. But it's not a good award. Oh. It is my dumbass of the week award. Yay! Now that is gonna be a guy you guys all might know love respect not me his name's ben Affleck or Affleck. oh my but, uh, god ben Affleck. here's my thing with ben you need to shut your mouth because right after this harvey weinstein way back to that he came out and he was condemning that how dare you harvey horrible person i can't with i've known you for years and i didn't know this well you better look in the mirror buddy it's because you've had rose mcgallis says oh yeah really really I saw, you know, I talked to you about this 10 years ago, and you said that you would take care of this. You told him to stop doing this. You've known about this for years. Um, and then you had another girl named Hillary Burton who said, well, I didn't, you know, what about what you did to me, man? What about when you grabbed my breast and all this other stuff? And he's like, yeah, that was a mistake. And you had a couple other girls come out and say, what about this? What about that? So when you start trying to condemn other people, you might want to look in the mirror and Especially when other people know about this. So it's coming out on Twitter. You better just be quiet. And just, you shouldn't have said a word, you know. Man. Just be quiet and be like, yeah, Ooh, one of my guys got caught. I better be careful. But no, you try and make it yourself look better. I am opposed to this. Well, you do the same thing. So don't throw stones in a glass house. And that's my advice. You shut up. Try and be Batman. Whatever you do, take your money, kiss the ring. Whatever you do, just shut your mouth, you idiot. Dumbass award, you want it. I, I what happened to King York Watkins? I, Nice to see you. Thanks for watching us. Please uh, shoot me a question about Ben Affleck. I don't care. Whatever movie you like for him. Tell me the worst movie he was in. Ooh. What was the one? Was it not the Batman? Wasn't he another superhero in some other movie? Daredevil. That's it. There you go, Ben that, Affleck. That's definitely Daredevil it. Daredevil, that Daredevil was a terrible, terrible movie. Absolutely terrible. Well, we we, we, we made it through. <laughs> He was, that was a oh, we are at the Stack Pickle Absolute next week. South Side next week. South Down Side, come south on, side. Stack Pickle on Southport Road, right off of Southport Road. So tomorrow, not tomorrow, next Thursday we will be there about 7 o'clock-ish. Start about 7.30-ish. Yeah. Always throw that ish in there. So uh, please come hang out. Like I said, you know, nobody, family friendly. Family friendly. It is family friendly. Come. If your kids need to 
learn some knowledge about how the world really works, come talk to me. I don't think they have gumbo in but I will buy a couple of people drinks if you come and hang out with me. So, I like it. Guys, thank you so much. It's been fun. I appreciate you guys. Um, please come hang out at the Stack Big. What else you got for us, Pete? We got a special guest next week. Oh, a mystery guest. Secret, secret. What? Huh? Who? It's a mystery. I it's a mystery. Oh John Holmes. Okay. It's, what is it's no longer a mystery. Well, We're bringing John, John Holmes in here. We'll talk later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.